Hello guys, so in this video I want to do the series of exercises when I'm going to solve some problems from Stuart Multivariable Calculus uh, section uh, change changing of variables. So let's start with doing first, uh, let's say problem 3 and 5, uh, where we need to find uh, the Jacobian of the given transformation. So for problem number 3, we have that um, x is given as a function in terms of s and t where x is equal to s cosine t and y is given as a function in terms of s and t where is it given as s times uh, sine t then jacobian in this case is going to begin by uh, the determinant of the matrix when i'm going to take the partial derivative corresponding to s partial derivative of x corresponding to t and my second uh, row is going to be uh, partial derivative of y corresponding to s and partial derivative of y corresponding to t. So in this case, what I'm going to obtain? Partial derivative of x corresponding to s is going to be just cosine t and partial derivative of x corresponding to t is going to be negative s sine t. Then for y of s, I'm going to have sine t and for y of t, I'm going to have s cosine t. Okay, and when I'm going to take the product of the determinant, what I'm going to have, I'm going to have s times cosine square t uh, minus and this minus will give us plus s times sine square t and since i can uh, factor uh, s i'm going to have s cosine square t times sine square t which is equal to one so my final answer is going to be s then you can see for problem number five uh, when we're going to given x in terms of u and v y in terms of v and w and z in terms of w and u then we're going to have that each component x y and z are going to be in terms of three variables which is u v and w so that's why instead of two by two uh, determinant i need to compute for the jacobian three by three determinant where my first row is going to be x partial u x partial v x partial w and the same is for my third row and third second row and third row when i'm going to plug in uh, instead of x y and w, y and z so i'm going to have y u y v y w and z u z v z w so what i'm going to obtain x partial u is going to be v x partial v is u x partial w is zero then i'm going to have y partial uh, u is zero y partial v is w y partial w is v and uh, z partial u is w uh, z partial v is zero and z partial w is zero so i'm going to compute the determin uh, determinant by taking the first element and expanding uh, corresponding to the first row and then what i'm going to have i'm going to have v times determinant of this small matrix over here which is going to be w v zero u minus u times the determinant of the matrix which is going to be given by these elements so i'm going to obtain times zero w v and u and then if i'm going to compute what i'm going to obtain i'm going to obtain uh, v times u times w and then i'm going to have minus and minus this minus will give us plus because we're using uh, the property that is going to be a product of diagonal elements minus a product of opposite diagonal. And there I'm also going to have uh, u, v, and w. And so the final answer is going to be 2 times u times v times w. So we got two answers for problem number 3 number 5. And that was just a small practice how we compute uh, how we compute Jacobians. Okay, so let's move on and do problem 7 and 9. So for problem number 7 what do i want to do i want to find the image of the set s under the given transformation so first we have our image uh, our set s as ordered pair of u and v where u changes between 0 and 3 and v changes between 0 and 2 and we have that our transformation is given by x is equal to 2u plus 3v and y is equal to u minus v. So first let's visualize this. Let's uh, take our Cartesian coordinates in terms of uh, u and v. 
and see how our set S is going to look like in that case. So U changes between 0 and 3. So we have uh, this point here. And V changes between uh, 0 uh, and 2. So we have this point here. So our region then is going to be this rectangular. And then we can see that when we're going to apply this transformation and express our coordinates in terms of X and Y, we're going to have a different shape. So basically, what does it mean? Like this transformation, you can see that you have x and y as a function in terms of u and v. So that means if you're going to compute the Jacobian, as we did before, you can check that our Jacobian is going to be equal to 2, 3, 1, negative uh, 1. So in this case, it's going to be equal to negative 2 minus 3 is equal to negative 5, which is non-zero. When Jacobian is non-zero for some transformation, or in other words, for change of variables, that means that uh, some region is going to be transformed in another region where um, we can move from this, from this set S to some set S prime that we're going to compute. And since Jacobian is non-zero, we're also going to be able to move back. So in other words, every time when we have uh, some set which is uh, given by some inequalities, we can do change of variables corresponding to that set and change that set into another one. And for most of these problems, like the biggest challenge to see like how exactly that set is going to change. So let me show you what you should do. So first approach is just uh take a look that we have these four points and our equations for change of variables are linear so that means points are going to go to points and straight lines are going to go to straight lines um, but it's going to be even easier to find our region we just need to find the image of those four points so in other words let's take a look what is going to be what is going to be x so we have the following points like 0, 0, 3, 0, 3, 2, and 0, 2. So let's find the corresponding x of 0, 0, y of 0, 0. So in this case, I'm going to have 0, 0. And let's do uh, the same computation for three other points. So when we got uh, our points, let's plot them. So we have that this point 0, 0, which I'm going to indicate by 1, is going to be mapped to 0, 0. Then the next point 2, which is 3, 0, is going to map to 6, 3. So I'm going to have uh, 4, 5, uh, 6, and then 3, so point is here. The next point is uh, 3, 2, which I'm going to indicate by 3, is going to be mapped to 1, 12. Sorry, 12, 1. So I'm going to have 12 is going to be around here. And then uh, finally is the last point, which is um, 0, 2, which I'm going to indicate by 4, is going to be mapped to uh, 6, negative 2. So I'm going to have, again, like 6 here, and negative 2 is negative 1, negative 2 is going to be. And then you can see 1 maps to 1, 2 maps to 2, 3 maps to 3, and 4 maps to 4. And since each of these vertices connects by the straight line, and my transformation is uh, includes a new variable x in terms of old variables u and v via linear relation, then that means straight lines will go to straight lines. So that means uh, what is going to happen is this line between 1 and 2 is going to go to line between 1 and 2 and so on for all the vertices. So what I'm going to obtain, I'm going to obtain this parallelogram. And you can see how our transformation, basically what it did. So first, uh, take a look that our side one, two, get flipped. And that is indicated by the negative sign of our Jacobian. Uh, and also, uh, remember that this Jacobian looks smaller, but this, uh, point over here corresponds to 12. So our like uh, rectangular got flipped, stretched, and its area increased by 5. 
So the absolute value of Jacobin means by how much your area is going to increase. So if this, if area here is, is, was like three times two, which is six, then area of here you can compute is going to be actually 30. And negative sign means that uh, our like kind of parallel, like our rectangular is going to get flipped. And you can check uh, here uh, on the left that we, the answers that we got for three, five, and seven are correct so far. So let's just continue and do more problems. So let's do problem number nine. So here we have a triangular region, which is given by vertices uh, zero, zero, one, one, and zero, one. And now transformation is x is equal to u squared and y is equal to v. So again, let's sketch our region. What I'm going to have, my region S where I'm going to use variables u and v is going to be 0, 0, 1, 1, and 0, 1. So it's going to be this triangle. I'm going to indicate this again by 1, 2, and 3. And using our transformation, we're going to obtain some new region that I have no idea how it's going to look like in terms of variables x and y. So let me show you other approach that you can use to find uh, the transformation. So first observe that we're going to have three straight lines. I'm going, let's call them A, B, and C. And what I'm going to do, I'm going to parameterize each of these lines and find what is going to be image of each separate uh, line segment. So first, uh, if I have line A, parameterization for the line A is going to be equal to x is equal to t, y is equal to t, and t changes uh, between 0 and 1. And you can check that in, indeed when t is equal to 0 I'm going to have this point, when t is equal to 1 I'm going to have point one one. and if you're going to move t between 0 and 1 then um, our point is going to move from the origin to 1 1. And then what is going to be image when x is equal to t and y is equal to t. Sorry, it's not x and y, uh, it's uh, u and v. Old habit to call the coordinates <laughs> x and y. Then if we have u and v is equal uh, to t, then in this case, my x is going to be equal to t squared, and my v, my y is going to be equal to t. And you can see when t is going to be equal to zero, I'm going to have point zero zero. And when t is equal to 1, I'm going to have point, point one, 1. But in this case, we have the relation that x is equal to y squared. So that means I'm going to have the part of the parabola that looks like this. Okay, and that is going to be my image a prime. So let's do the same for let's do the same for line b. In this case, b is going to be constant. We're going to have that y is constant is equal to 1 because it's like a horizontal line oh sorry not, not to 1 yeah is equal to 1 yeah it's 3 it's like just um, the number of uh, the order of my in which each in which I'm going to cover my uh, vertices and then x is equal to uh, I'm going to take I'm going to change direction I'm going to make this direction so x is equal to t and when t changes again between 0 and 1. So in this case, what I'm going to have, I'm going to, oh, I did the same mistake. It's not uh, x and y, it's going to be u and v. So then my x is going to be t squared, and my y is going to be equal to 1. So when my y is going to be equal to 1, and x is going to be t squared, you can guess I'm going to obtain actually uh, this line here. So that top line is going to be the image of b, which is b prime. And let's do the same for c. You can easily check that we're going to have x is equal to 0, y is equal to t, and the same t changes between 0 and 1. And again, like u and v, <laughs> sorry about that. Uh, so if u is equal to 0, then x is equal to 0. And if uh, y is equal to v, then again, like y is equal to t. And when it changes from 0 to 1, I'm going to obtain exactly this part. So you can see how right now my um, region, which was a triangle, became kind of a tra uh, became uh, a transform transformed triangle. Okay, so we did four problems in this video. 
uh, in my next video I'm going to continue and compute problem uh, compute problem 11 and 13 and possibly 15 17 we'll see how long it's going to take uh, yeah so I'm going to make this kind of videos if you like them please uh, like if you're not subscribed please subscribe if you want just to share something I don't know just write down in the comments otherwise have a nice day and bye and yeah thank you for watching